Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Studio Coffee. Uh, it is November 29th, the day after Thanksgiving, which is Black Friday. Uh, I'm here in my studio preparing for uh, a sale that's going to start uh, online tomorrow. So uh, you can check that out. So I'm uh, photographing and pricing pots and all that sort of stuff and trying to get it all set. Uh, I'm also drinking coffee today out of a mug by a former student of mine, Tim Hansen, and this was fired in a wood kiln, and you can kind of see it's got this really nice warm brown caramely surface in this very, um, I would call this a sort of early English style tankard mug. Um, it's really fun to um, hold. It's really well made, and uh, you can. I'll post a link to his Instagram um, at the uh, comment section for the video. Um, since it's Black Friday, I thought maybe today I would talk a little bit about buying and selling. Uh, and so, uh, for artists out there, uh, and particularly for students, so have, you know, working with a lot of students. Uh, there's a, uh, a recommendation I have for you. Two recommendations. Um, one is, if you are an artist, you have to buy art. And um, you have to buy it now. So um, one of the things that uh, I oftentimes see a disconnect with is that uh, artists and art students are very eager to sell work, but when it comes to actually buying work, they're pretty horrified, they're terrified of the prices, course they are there can be terrifying for anybody um but they're also trying to make work that they're oftentimes trying to sell for a heck of a lot of money um so even as students and there's this sort of belief that um you know one day when i'm successful then i will be able to buy artwork and the world will be a happy place um, and maybe that will be true, uh, but the way you need to actually think about it is to start right now buying artwork, which means you buy cheaper stuff. So um, you should be able to find art by your colleagues, the people who are at the same level you are that you can afford to buy, and you should buy it. You should support each other. That's really the key. So there's a sort of mythical idea that there's this art world that is some high echelon thing with all of these uh, really rich uh, patrons of the arts. And uh, if you can just kind of tackle that market and you can break into that, then everything will be great. People tend to shoot for that, but people tend to forget and ignore the people who are right around them. My recommendation to you is that your art world is the people around you. And uh, historically, you actually find that that's true. So almost every movement, if you look at sort of modernist art movements uh, that are, you know, have sort of gained importance, when they were started, they actually started by a small group of people who um, kind of shared a vision and the way that shared that vision is that they supported each other. So they would buy each other's artwork, which would help each other support you know, rent for their apartments or studios or whatever it is in New York that you were trying to do or anywhere else in the world. And um, it's actually because they started to buy from each other that their community grew and then they began to attract people from outside. So buy each other's work. That brings me to part two, which is that if you are an artist, whatever amount of money you can afford to pay for an artwork you should have that amount, you should have artwork that sells for that amount of money. So uh, if your upper limit is 50 bucks, like if you're just out of college, okay, I know you have no money, I know you have tons of debt, and I know like it feels like this huge burden of that. And so you may not have a lot of money to spend, and I get that. But if you have 50 bucks to spend, then you should try to make artwork that sells for 50 bucks. That doesn't mean that you undercut your prices. That's not what I mean. So I, what I don't mean is like, you know, a giant painting that you made or the best sculpture all of a sudden, which you really know is worth $3,000, $4,000, whatever, whatever your mark is, whatever you feel it's worth. Don't suddenly sell the $3,000 thing for $50, but 
Think about ways that you can say, make reproductions of that piece that you could sell for $50. A uh, really popular way to do that is G clay prints. Uh, you can find out all about that online. If you don't already know, you probably already know more about that than I do. Um, even, uh, you know, uh, sort of things like postcards or um, other ways of uh, making posters through online printers, um, anything like that, that will just allow you to be able to sell at a lower price point. Um, what typically actually happens uh, for most artists is that it's not that they break into an upper tier, but that the people that they are with who are already naturally inclined to support them, you become part of that community. And as that community grows and grows up, particularly say if you're in your 20s, as you all grow into your 30s and into your 40s and on and on and you become people around you become more successful and people have more opportunities if you've already established that you are an artist that they enjoy then they're more likely to come back to you for stuff at a larger price point so you actually grow your community up together so that's a kind of a weird marketing 101 which is not entirely what I'm trying to do with these but um, Anyway, I just want you to start thinking um, more about who are the people around you uh, and uh, what can you do in that community that you're already a part of instead of trying to break into a new community of mythical people that you don't even know who they are or how to find. It's not to say that you can't continue to shoot for high-end markets. Definitely do that. I do that all the time. Um, but don't forget the people who are around you. That's kind of the key and support each other so important So I'm really fortunate that I'm a potter and That means that I can buy a lot of pots that are $50 uh, or you know Right now most of the pots I'm interested in are somewhere between 50 and 150 bucks um, and that is an easy price point for potters, so uh, I'm kind of fortunate that the market that I'm in or the thing that I make, there's already a kind of a low end market. There's a higher end market too. Um, so there's an opportunity for me to get in pretty easily. But anyway, um, you should be able to find a way to do it no matter what you do. And that's part of my encouragement to you is to, um, to find that way. Find a way to make work that you can sell at a price that you can afford. Okay, that's it. Happy coffee drinking, happy Thanksgiving. And uh, I'll see you next week. Bye.